Welcome back to the channel folks, my name's Shane. In today's video we're comparing two of my favorite Sony cameras. That's right, not a Panasonic video today, two of my favorite Sonys. We have the Sony FX30 APS-C camera over here and the Sony FX3 full frame sensor camera on this side. Both of these cameras will give you excellent results irrespective if you're using them in a studio or out in the field. I can get excellent results out of both of these cameras. I know a lot of the hype on YouTube always pushes people towards full frame cameras. That's absolute nonsense. You can get great results out of either of these two cameras in most shooting scenarios. Now there's always trade-offs with every camera system. None of them are perfect. I'm gonna talk about what I like and dislike about both of these cameras, but they're both excellent. And if you can't get good results out of either two of these, you're doing something wrong. When it comes to autofocus performance, at least with the lenses that I have, I would consider this a tie. The Sony FX3 has great product showcase mode. You can hold it up in front of your face and it will go towards the object. The Sony FX30 can do exactly the same thing. Both of these cameras are great. It'll track your eye anywhere in the frame, even with or without sunglasses. Occasionally, if I'm too far back or if I turn my head, it can go to the background, but this happens very rarely. It just happens from time to time. Or if you've got a poster of someone's face behind you, <laughs> and say you've got a poster room, whatever the case may be, it can sometimes opt to find that face instead of yours if you turn your head. But that's face detection autofocus with a F, with this phase detection autofocus with a P. But both of these work beautifully. When it comes to low light performance, sure, it's great to have 12,800 and beyond. And if you're a wedding filmmaker or if you're gonna be shooting any type of documentary work or short films, then I would say go for the Sony FX3. That low light performance will come in handy. But for anyone starting a YouTube channel or if you just wanna get into filmmaking, the Sony FX30 is more than capable. I'm heavily backlit right now. It's dark in here. I'm at f1.4 on both cameras. Let us know if you can see a huge difference. Let's talk about ergonomics and handling because both of these cameras are two of the best on the market. Whether you get the Sony FX3 or the FX30, they both feel identical in the hand. Unlike the majority of cameras on the market, we get a top mounted joystick instead of a rear one, which means you shoot more from the hip with this camera. We get the fully articulating screen on both. I'll talk more about those in just a moment. The grip on the Sony FX30 and FX3 are identical as are the bodies. So if you like the design of either of these two cameras, they'll feel identical in the hand. One of the reasons to purchase either of these two cameras over something like the ZV-E1, which is a very hyped camera as of June of 2023, is the fact we get active cooling on both cameras. This is one of the biggest reasons why I ended up with both. I shot a series of videos over in Florida and I live in Australia and it gets extremely hot in both locations and I didn't want either camera overheating or having to wait till they cooled down, all that kind of stuff. The active cooling works beautifully and if you want a camera that's reliable and dependable, both of these are excellent. Sony FX3 and FX30 both share the same dual SD and CF Express Type A card slots. As you can see in the Sony FX30 here, I have a traditional V90 SD card, and this bottom slot is using the one I got for free with the camera, which is this Sony CF Express Type A card slot. Now, the majority of modes will work with the V90 SD card, so that's what I use predominantly, but we get a sense of backup. Not only do we get a sense of backup, but both of these cameras can record proxy files. Being able to record proxy files within the camera saves you having to do it in Final Cut or DaVinci Resolve, which will save you hours if you have hundreds of files that you need to convert. Not only does the camera record the high resolution files, it will give you a much easier proxy file that you can use for editing. This is one of the best workflow advantages to both of these cameras. Adding to the workflow advantage of both of these cameras, we get a full size HDMI port, which is fantastic. No more micro HDMI, which I'm not a big fan of. We get a 3.5 millimeter audio input and a headphone output, which allows you to monitor in real time, or you can play back your files and make sure that your audio is fine. Down over here, we have our USB-C port. Now, both cameras are fully compatible with USB-C PD charging or power delivery. So I can let these run all day and record all day with a USB-C PD power supply. Now I did a full video about that and I'll link it up in the cards. The biggest difference between the USB-C port on both of these cameras is the Sony FX30 actually has an advantage. It can be used as a webcam, which allows you to get professional video quality over Skype, or if you wanna stream directly to the web via an app or a browser, you can do that with the Sony FX30 but not with the Sony FX3. Let's talk about the LCD screens because they're not identical. The FX30 is much better and brighter. We get more resolution and a sharper and cleaner image. If we take a look at the FX3, it's okay, but it's nowhere near as bright. 
with exactly the same scene. You can notice a massive difference. They're both lit evenly, all that kind of stuff. The FX30 leaves it for dead, so it's much brighter. I would say the visibility on the FX30 almost looks twice as bright to my eye. Both of these cameras are capable of producing up to 14 or 15 stops of dynamic range thanks to shooting in S-Log3. Now, I color grade these very simply and I get excellent results out of both and you get very comparable results out of both. The biggest difference you're gonna notice shooting at F4 on both of these shots right now is basically how much background blur we're gonna get. We're gonna see more on the Sony FX3 over the FX30, but skin tones and color science and all that kind of stuff should look excellent on both cameras. I just took my old ass Jeep Patriot in to get serviced and I needed a hire car and Jeep gave me this. This is a 2023 Jeep Wrangler Overland. It's absolutely stunning. So what I thought I'd do right now is compare the 4K at 100 frames per second between the FX3 and FX30. I'm also gonna be using this circular polarizer and ND filter from Hayda. I have a full review of this coming up very soon, so stay tuned for this. This will help cut the glare on the paint job of the car. It actually works great. So I'll talk a little bit about the results as we get through this particular section. Here we go. Let's talk about how it feels shooting with both the FX3 and FX30 for some of those slow motion shots. Now, outside of the car, you can get excellent results with both. I think they both have exceptional image quality. I was shooting at f1.4 on both lenses. Now, when it comes to the FX30, I have to take into account the additional crop. It's cropping in even smaller than micro four thirds, which only works in good sunlight. When I was shooting the interior of the car with the Sony FX30, I actually had to take the circular polarizer and ND filter off because it would have just been way too noisy. You can still make it work, but you need more light for the Sony FX30 to do the same type of job. And if you're shooting outside predominantly, you're not going to have a problem. The results will look amazing, but the win goes to the FX3. I don't have to take into account any major crops. I think you lose about eight or 10% of the field of view shooting at 100 or 120 frames per second. And the results look beautiful. It will be far less noisy on the Sony FX3 thanks to that full frame sensor. I hope that the Sony FX30 can get some sort of firmware update that allows us to apply some noise reduction in camera or a little bit more noise reduction. I think that would be really handy, especially when shooting at those higher frame rates. But if you plan on buying the Sony FX30 over the Sony FX3 due to price, you can absolutely make it work. And if that crop bothers you, you've still got excellent 4K at 60 frames per second with no crop. So keep that in mind, you can definitely make this work. And if you're shooting on a 24 frame per second timeline, you can slow 60 frames down nicely and it will look great. Shadows and sun are all over the place. By the way, this car, woo, awesome. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about the IBIS system that's built into the Sony FX30 and FX3. Now, the great news is both of them perform well if you're behind the camera, shooting with active steady shot on handheld. You can make this work without any problems at all. The biggest limitation that this system has is once you start moving. You can, again, make it work, but you have to sort of watch your speed and step. You'll need to ninja walk a little bit more than you would with other camera systems on the market like Olympus, and Panasonic, but you can make active steady shot work. Now, if you plan on shooting 4K at 100 or 120 frames per second, active steady shot turns off and you go back to standard mode, which basically does nothing in my experience. So just keep that in mind. If you want the best in stabilization, neither of these two cameras are that good, but they're both on par with each other. So there's no real sacrifice between going between the FX3 and FX30. All right, day three, let's finish this video. If it's been helpful, please leave a thumbs up. So you're looking at the Sony FX30 and the FX3. My ISO is on 100, so it's so low. So you don't need to crank the ISO up in a studio under controlled lighting conditions. And it's not that bright in here whatsoever. So both of these will give you exceptional results. At the end of the day, the image quality out of both of these cameras is fantastic. The wind goes to the Sony FX3 for slow motion and low light performance, but in any other scenario, they're almost indistinguishable from each other. The Sony FX30 is still more than capable when it comes to slow motion. Just know if you plan on shooting 4K at 120 frames per second, for best results, shoot on a bright sunny day like I did with the Jeep, and the results will look every bit as good as the FX3. 
Using different lenses on both camera systems, you're going to notice a difference in the color science, but if I was to use exactly the same lens, you would see just how similar they are, and one isn't really any better than the other. I think the Sony FX30 leans a little bit more towards magenta than the FX3, but it's minimal, but this is just using my eyeball test. For those looking for the best value camera, the FX30 is by far the best choice, but if you want the most premium slow motion and low light performance, the win goes to the Sony FX3. Thanks for watching.